Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dangen. On today's episode, we're gonna install the latest firmware update for the Vava Chroma, and we'll also do a quick calibration to see how it performs. Stick around. All right, everyone, like I said before, we're going to calibrate and install a brand new firmware update for the Vava Chroma. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe below. Today's episode will be mainly focused on what the new update provides for the Vava Chroma, and maybe we can get some good image content so you guys can understand what actually changed. Thanks for joining me here on the Dangen, and let's get going. Okay guys, we're going to begin today's test by going over some of the settings before the software update. So to begin, we'll go down to settings, image, image settings currently are on standard, advanced settings, MEMC is on standard. We're going to close that. We're going to turn dynamic contrast on everything else is where we want it to be. Next thing we'll do, go to the App Store. Now that we're in the App Store, let's check out some content. I'm going to do 4K HDR. So what we're looking for in this dark scene is any type of ghosting. I'm using the YouTube app that's built into the Vava Chroma. Um, on darker scenes, you tend to get a lot of blur or what, what people do call ghosting. You can kind of see it at the back of the spaceship there. I'm hoping we'll see some of that in this scene here with Darth Vader. And then I'm hoping that the next software update that we do fixes that. So as you can see now, a little bit pixelated. It could be the YouTube app, it could be the Chroma, but I do see a little bit of ghosting. All in all, not too bad though. This scene honestly seems to be fine. I really think it's just the app that's not very good. On incredibly dark portions of the screen, hopefully the camera's picking it up. Like I mentioned, you do get a tad bit of ghosting but really not what I expected to see. I, I thought it would be much worse and it seems to be pretty good. Like here you can kind of see it, but like I said, it might just be the quality of the YouTube app. Okay, now we're gonna check out some sports to see if there's any type of ghosting or stuttering. Don't see anything major, it actually looks very clear. Uh, once again, this is the Vava Chroma YouTube app that's built in. All right, I'm going to pause it here and I'm now going to switch to game mode and see if it looks any better. Go to settings, image, image mode, game. Not too much of a change on game mode. Still looks pretty clear. Motion rate seems to be about the same. No stuttering, no ghosting. So far, so good. Let's try film mode. So I don't really get any much, any uh, ch any change going through the modes. Honestly, everything seems to be pretty consistent. Uh, maybe the brightness changed a little here and there, but nothing major. Everything else seems fine. Okay, so now we're going to go into the device info. <clears throat> You'll see that the software version is there in the center. LV 
068 underscore v1.6.1 underscore 2022 0324 dot 1132.44. Now we're going to check for updates. There you go. VASP003 version 1.0700. We're going to go ahead and click update. All right, looks like the update is complete. We'll let the Vava boot back up here. Now let's test that same footage, or at least what we can that's close to it, to see if anything's changed. Checking for updates again. You'll see that we're on the current version. So that's where we wanted to be. I'm going to Image now. Image sen settings is still set to standard. These are the stock standard settings since the update. In the advanced settings, MEMC is still set to close, dynamic contrast is still on, and color temperature is set to standard. Now we're going to go to the App Store, back into YouTube. It booted up much quicker this time. The image looks incredibly clear. No ghosting visible. Looks very good, actually. The reds look a little bit like they're clipping, maybe. It could be the YouTube app, once again. But honestly, it looks very good. The dark seems uh, perfectly normal. The definition definitely looks like 4K. And the HDR, you can tell with just the lightsaber there, is incredible. Color still looks good. So yeah, no complaints here either. Everything looks good. If not, um, it looks even more refined in my opinion. I'll tell you what, this looks way more smooth. The color is still really nice, but the motion rate seems much improved. This is using the same Vava App Store YouTube app. I don't see much stuttering at all. This is very, very nice footage. And um, I have to say, in standard mode, it looks real good for sports. So we'll switch image mode to game mode. Not really a noticeable change. That's a good thing. Very clear once again. Definitely impressive. So all in all, uh, if I had to say that there were improvements, I would say that the color seems much more realistic, much more natural. The dark scenes in movies uh, don't have as much ghosting or any type of issues with like black scenes, dark scenes where you would see any type of trails. And then sports look very, very smooth. So I'd have to say that um, the software update was a success. You guys should definitely give it a try if you haven't done it yet. I think your Vava Chroma will definitely benefit from it. Uh, I know this one has. Okay guys, so for the next part of this video, I have it switched over to the PlayStation 4 Pro. This is a um, 
another YouTube app. Everything looks just as good as the Vava did, so let's check out a dark scene and see if it's also improved on this. This is a extremely dark scene of an ocean. Um, not sure if you guys can see it perfectly, but um, it's just the moonlight reflecting on some white caps coming into a beach. Seems pretty clear to me. Here's another dark scene using the YouTube app on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Looks incredibly clear to me, smooth. Uh, very high definition, so 4K looks fine as well. Let's try a perfect black demo. <clears throat> Excellent footage here. Four K, a little bit of motion, no ghosting. Excellent clarity. Pretty impressed. Let's check out a game just to check one more thing. Nice and smooth. No ghosting. Controls work just fine as far as moving the camera around with no motion blur. HDR looks really good if you look at those trees up there. Nice and nice and green. You got some um, some highlights with the with the flowering. You can see there reflections from the water. Nothing crazy there either. A little cutscene here. Okay, everybody, now that we have the firmware update complete on the Vava Chroma, the next step is we're going to do a color calibration. Now, what I mean by that is we're going to use the Spears and Munsell DVDs. One is SDR, one is HDR, one is standard. 1080p, the other is Ultra HD. We'll go through things like brightness, contrast, color, and a few other options in order to get the best picture out of the Vava Chroma now that we have the latest software update. We're going to head into the first calibration session. This is for standard definition non-HDR. What we're going to do before we jump into the actual calibration with the disc is I'm just going to go down here in the Vava Chroma settings and confirm that everything is um, set to even. So what I mean by that is you want everything to be like standard reset out of the box, you know, 50% in all image settings, etc. So we're going to go into image. I'm going to go into image settings and then I'm going to go to image mode. I'm going to go all the way over here to customized. Once I select Customized, I'm going to go down and just check all the different image settings. So brightness out of a scale of 0 to 100 is at 50. That's what we want. Contrast 50. Chroma is at 50 now. Hue is at 0, which is in the center. Definition, let's just make that 10 to keep it even. And that is it. Next thing we'll do is we'll go to Advanced Settings. Uh, the MEMC, I'm going to select Close. Dynamic Contrast, we will keep on. Color Temperature, zero across the board, also on Customized. And then we'll just check the Light Source Settings. It looks like it's at Level 9, which it says Standard. So we'll go ahead and leave it at that. That's, that's uh, just one click below bright mode. Now that we've checked all those different image settings, we're going to select HDMI 1, which is what I have the Xbox Series X plugged into. And there you go. We have the Spears and Munsell disc. One more time, we'll check the settings. It is still on customized and it's still 50% and all the changes we made across the board. Now we can get started. 
what we'll do to begin is we'll go up to video calibration and we will begin with contrast image settings there's the brightest everything disappears and then we'll go all the way to the darkest and it disappears that way so now we want to find where can we get it to the brightest level where the most visible box begins to disappear. So in this case, 233, when does that start to disappear? You know, we'll try 45. I kind of like 45. So 45 seems to be the set point to start. The next test is to do brightness, customized brightness. That's the complete brightness. And that's the complete negative or darkness. So right there at 48, the 2% shows up. So we will leave that. We'll go down to color and tint. And what we'll do here, is we actually view these through a blue light filter. So the hue that I calculate and we'll keep is minus three. Once again we're going to go back and now we'll go to sharpness. And really here use your best judgment. We want to make sure here that the lines on definition make it so it's nice and sharp. 20. So I'm going to leave it at 20 nice and sharp. I don't see anything too overbearing when it comes to the sharpness at that level. Once again, we'll go back. Now we're going to go to the color temperature. We're going to go to advanced settings and we're going to go to color temperature. Leave it at cool. I like cool. Looks good. And what that does here is keeps it at red one, green minus 10, blue zero. Let's check some demonstration material. We'll do the lighthouse. Looks real good. Very natural. Good shade of blue. The image looks just how it should. We'll do one more demonstration. Looks real good. So, to show you guys exactly what the standard definition disk image settings that we calibrated to, go ahead and select your menu, select image. Like I mentioned before, we did this under customized. Under the image mode customized, you'll see that brightness we set to 48, contrast 45, chroma 50, Hue, minus 3, definition, 20. Go to Advanced Settings next. Like I mentioned before, MEMC we have set to close. Dynamic Contrast is on. Color Temperature is set to Cool. And under Cool, you'll see red is 1, green is minus 10, blue is zero. The picture looks excellent in standard definition. Next, let's move on to the Ultra HD disc. All right, everybody. Now we are on the Spears and Munsell Ultra HD disc. Keep in mind, you'll still need the blue light filter that comes with the standard definition disc. We're going to go into configuration first and we're going to select luminance. I'm going to leave that at 1000. To the right, you'll see you have HDR gamut. We'll leave that at P3D65 slash BT2020. And for audio codec, we'll leave that on true HD because we're not doing sound in this video. The next thing we're going to do 
is move down to Video Setup, and we'll begin with Contrast. Our image mode is still set to customized, and our settings still remain. Going down to contrast, and I would say a good setting here is 47. Not too much different from what we set on the other. Now we'll go back, and we'll begin brightness. We want to take this down until 2% disappears, and then back it off by just 1. Brightness we will leave at 49. Next, color and tint. Here again we'll use the blue light filter. We want the boxes on the left hand side to disappear, and we want the boxes on the right to match. And the way we do that, we'll go into image, and it looks like it'll maintain at minus 3 again. We'll go back. We'll check sharpness. And the results have varied on this. I would say that 20 is too much. And to me, it looks like 6 is actually where we want to be. Let's check color temp. Previously, we selected the cool color, color temperature, and I think cool still looks the best. Once cool is set, we have red at 1, green at minus 10, blue at 0. Next thing we'll do is view some demo material. In this case, since this projector does not handle Dolby Vision, we're going to go down to HDR10. Great contrast between the whites, the greens. The horse's fur looks very natural. The definition on the deer looks just fine as well. I think we found some good settings. I don't see any clipping or major thrown off brightness when it comes to yellow or red. Everything seems very clear. So, for reference, in image, we'll go to image settings customized. And once again, brightness is 49, contrast is 47, chroma is 50, hue is minus 3, definition is 6. Under advanced settings, MEMC is set to close, dynamic contrast is on, color temperature is set to cool. All right, guys, this is a example I just want to show you of some gaming in 4K HDR now that we have the Chroma set up and calibrated with the new software update. For those of you that are interested in gaming, it does run at 4K 60. There is not a mode that handles 120 hertz, but the color does look really good. And our settings seem to have taken to the Vava Chroma very well, even when gaming. So once again, these are the settings that I am going to leave on the Vava Chroma in my media room here. Uh, I do recommend that you place your Chroma in the darkest room you can to get the full benefit, especially during calibration or content viewing. But ultimately, follow those steps, pick up the Spears and Munsell's DVDs, they're well worth it. 
and calibrate exactly how you feel the image looks best in your media room. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's episode on the Vava Chroma. If you enjoy my content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Once again, thanks for joining me here on The Danger, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you.